the disc jockey didn't even look at me. He was so disgusted by this contest. And it was like 11 to midnight. I told him I was going to get out of radio. And he said, you've wanted to do this since you were eight years old. The rest is really kind of bad, crappy history. The big break, I guess. There was one when I was 13 years old. I won a contest. Be on the radio for an hour. You've got to believe it was a bad radio station. And it was actually, I mean, it was a local radio station. It was KBRC in Mount Vernon. And uh, it was the one that I used to listen to in my father's bakery when we were working at the shop. And I just wanted to be a disc jockey. I won the contest. I don't think anybody else entered. And I was on the air and I'll never forget the, <laughs> the disc jockey didn't even look at me. He was so disgusted by this contest. And it was like 11 to midnight. And um, I said to the disc jockey, okay, listen, I'm 13 years old. Listen, when the song says this at the very end, I want you to hit the next song. And he just, all he did was, he turned around, the one time I remember him looking at me, he said, relax, kid, it's an hour. And uh, so I finished that hour and I took the tape to um, an even worse station and uh, they hired me. And then the rest is really kind of bad, crappy history, but history. Uh, nonetheless and then I was about to get out I actually thought I was gonna <laughs> and you know some people probably would have enjoyed this a little more but I, I thought I was gonna go to um, cooking school uh, I mean, like, this is like 1999 I mean I've just I've destroyed my career and everything else and uh, I got married and I told my wife I said you know what I'm gonna try talk radio once um, and I did that because my father told me, uh, I told him I was going to get out of radio. And he said, you've wanted to do this since you were eight years old. And I said, yeah, I know, Dad, but it doesn't make sense to me anymore. The new Y95 Morning Zookeepers, Glenn Beck and Tim Hattrick. We told our bosses right up front, we don't need gimmicks to sell the new Y95. And he said, it's because you're not talking about the things that interest you. Why don't you talk about the things that are you and give that a whirl? So I did, and uh, I did that for a year down in Tampa, and the ratings went from 18th place to 21st place, and I got a phone call from Craig Kitchen. He was the guy who ran Premier. It was his company. He started it. You know, Rush Limbaugh and Sean Hannity and Casey Kasem and Ryan Seacrest and all these, you know, people, and, and he said, uh, we're looking for something that can replace Dr. Laura on the East Coast. And uh, I said, wow, good luck with that. And um, he said, we think it's you. So he syndicated me and we signed our second contract with him. And really, I barely got the contract. I mean, I don't even think I got a pay raise or anything. He just, we barely got it. And I remember I met him in Chicago and he slid the contract across the table and I signed it. And he said, that was a close one. <laughs> we almost didn't get that contract. And I said, I, I know, and I, I want to thank you so much. But listen, I want to talk to you about something. I want to talk to you about uh, coming to work for me. And here's this big executive, and he went, excuse me? And I said, I, I, I know this is like Mr. Ace Hardware, um, you know, talking to Mr. Home Depot, but um, I think there's going to come a time that you should work for me. Not now. And he said, yeah, I just, I mean, did you hear me? I, we just almost didn't get this contract. And I said, I know, I know. But... Uh, it's going to work, and I want you to come work for me. And uh, he said, well, that's the most interesting offer I think I've ever received. And when that time comes, you know, we'll talk. About a year ago, he came to work for me. I get to work with uh, the best people in the business, and that is not luck. That's a blessing. Radio doesn't pay any money. Radio, for some reason, is uh, treated like an ugly stepchild in the media business and when it is the most powerful form of communication out there. Uh, that's why they always keep trying to shut it down, um, because if you can do it and do it well and never betray your audience, always be who you are, um, it's, it's, it's powerful. Um, and I didn't learn that from my first time on the radio, I learned that from my, one of my radio heroes, in fact, both of them did this, uh, Paul Harvey and uh, Orson Welles.
they both knew exactly that just depending on how far away you are from the microphone, how everything changes. That radio is an art form uh, and a dying art form if there aren't more people that get into it that realize that, that it's an art form. Just like television, everything. I guess I learned that from my dad who was a, a baker and uh, he said anybody that can make food that tastes good but it takes a real artist to make it taste good and look even better. <laughs>